like this. Recording in progress. Okay, here we go, everybody. How are you? Hey, it's Monday. It's our pop-up show with a lot of our favorite people in the whole world. And yes, we're doing a show today. Uh, let me just move this mic a little closer to me. And uh, yeah, we're um, we're uh, ready to go here. I I would I would fail to say. Okay, let me see here. Now let me admit all. And here we go. Here's the bunch. Oh, wow, we got a bunch of them. I didn't know how many we would get today because today is a holiday. Paula, you're always there. We thank you for that. Marjorie, you're always there. I'm always here. You're a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see here. Charlene, how are you, Charlene? Good I'm to good. Be I'm good. Monica, I guess you have nothing to do on this holiday, huh? Scott? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. You have nothing to do on this holiday, right? They're all holidays to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good thinking. Good thinking. And let's see here. Oh, yes. Uh, there is, uh, There is, of course, our, our old friend, unindicted co-conspirator number seven. How are you? I am well, sir. Yes. And, of course, <laughs> uh, the wonderful uh, Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. And man, man, Mandy O'Brien. Hello, Mandy. Good to see Hello, you. Hello, just walked in. Yeah. Just in time. Gee, I thought you were sitting next to me. I forgot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, 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 Charlie. Hello, Charlie. How are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, and uh, how's the heat down there? Oh, it's nice. It's around 100 degrees. Nice and cool. Nice and cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think maybe we should ask Mandy to fill you in on something. Oh. How about, what kind? What kind of condition would you a week ago? You were gimpy. I was you were gimpy. a little gimpy. Yeah. I mean, I was limping, right? You were banged up. Yeah. Yeah. You saw the way I was. I. I, I, I by third Tuesday, I couldn't even walk. I mean, it was that bad. And no. I had an appointment with the doctor, the knee doctor, who went and did x-rays and saw that I didn't have any major damage. I may have had a, you know, maybe a, a torn meniscus, but he couldn't tell that on the on an x-ray. Um, yeah. But he said, but he then said, well, we can do with several things. One of the things he said was we can give you a shot in the knee. Well, I go. Give me the shot in the knee, damn it. Do it. You know, because I was in such pain. Marjorie and I had had lunch across the street, and I could barely walk across the street to the doctor's office. I mean, it was that bad, right, Marjorie? What? It was pretty bad. Huh? It was pretty bad. What was? <laughs> Just tuned you out. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, it was terrible. So I, so he gave me a shot, right? You know, you, it was like I had gone to Lourdes, <laughs> you know, uh, the shot did everything. I mean, it, it, the, the cortisone shot just uh, killed the inflammation. By the next day, I didn't have any of the pain anymore. It was gone. Nice. I mean, it would take at least a week to get better. And here it is, not only a week, and I'm, I'm, it's like nothing was wrong with that knee. That's so good. Yeah. But I decided I was going to take the rest of the week off because I wanted to heal. I was so exhausted from just having this thing, you know? And, and I feel way, so they're... bad because you were coming to visit and I wanted to be in the best shape I possibly could. I, I know. Now I feel kind of bad that I intruded. No, you didn't. That, that didn't at all. House. You were part of my therapy. How's that? Good. Yeah. Does that how's, make you feel? How's the kitty cat? Is that wait, how's what? Is the kitty cat still there? Or have y'all? You didn't get to see the kitty cat, did you? No, I didn't. Because the kitty cat hid. Well, Marjorie she was hiding. The last time this cat came, Marjorie took eight thousand pictures of the cat. <laughs> Marjorie, how many pictures did you take this time? Two. Ooh. <laughs> You know, there, there was one guy years ago, some, I don't know who it was, who said that uh, 
what he does with cats is he loves them as kittens, and when they grow up to be cats, he drowns them. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> sometimes a cute kitty turns out to just be a nothing burger. You know? Would you say Berta became a nothing burger? Oh, that's terrible. Huh? <laughs> that's terrible to speak Yeah, about. that's not even a, what that's way? a joke about. It's not oh, even she, funny. She, she was adorable, an adorable kitten, and she had certain fun traits as an adult, but it wasn't the same, was it? Well, it's been some years since she stayed with us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Alex, can you jiggle your knee a little bit? That chip the guy injected isn't working. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, okay. it's, it's <laughs> the tracking's on. Right. Yeah. Um, I got, I just want to make sure, you know, I want to make sure of something. Because last week when we did the show, uh, I had the audio and um, uh, it was not, it was not going through. Yeah. But now it is. Now it's fine. It, uh, what happened was I, I had it set so you were hearing all my audio off the mic, off the uh, microphone and camera, and so it sounded kind of like, yeah, not not terrific. Now it's working fine. So what are you all doing on this? Uh, well, what am I asking that for? You're here. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and Len Lafrisco is calling, and he said that he might not be able to call because it's his wife's birthday. And they are in, where are you, Reno, Len? Let me see. He's connecting. Len, you're in Reno, right? All right. <laughs> On location. On location. <laughs> yeah. That looks like a casino, actually. Yeah. The ceiling. You know. And up above him, above in that uh, area, above him with all that lighting, they have guys looking down at the people playing. That's right. Yep, that's right. Uh, uh, are you there, Len? Can you hear me? Yes, I am. How are you? Yes, I told him you're in Reno, right? Correct. Yes, you, it's, it's fairly obvious, is it not? Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, yeah. I used to spend the many a summer in Reno. Well, you guys got married up this way too, didn't you? We got married to Lake Tahoe. Yeah. Yeah, I just drove just drove through there. Last place that Marjorie ever imagined she'd get married is Lake Tahoe. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? And to you, especially. <laughs> <laughs> how, how's, your, uh, how's your leg? Oh, the leg, I was just telling everybody, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like uh, it never happened. They gave me a uh, cortisone shot. It, Excellent. Uh, that uh, is an anti-inflammatory and... Boom, it's like, I, as I say, it was like I went to Lourdes. It just cleared up totally. You know? That's good to hear. That's yeah. good to hear. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say hi. I'm not going to hold the phone up all this time, but uh, I wanted to say hi to everybody and make sure you're feeling okay. And right, you're, in the, you you're in the casino talking yeah. to your yeah. camera. You're not supposed to do that. They usually will come and tell you. Not to do that, you know if they come throw me out, I've been thrown out in nicer places. So it's all right. <laughs> if you get thrown out of anywhere, get thrown out of a casino because then you won't lose any money. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yes. You know. I'm going to go do that right now. So wish me luck. <laughs> okay. Well, Good luck. Let, win lots of money. Let a little fresco, ladies and gentlemen, on location in Reno, Nevada. <laughs> all right. See you guys. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Uh, uh, hopefully, we'll get hear from uh, we'll hear from Brian. How do I make it? Man, or he's known Mandy's nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, when did it start? Yeah. Oh. It, it, no, it's yeah. just fun. It's just fun. Yeah. Uh, I know, because I get all the attention, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and deservedly so. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, we like Kim, but you know, these are a bunch of guys. <laughs> no, they aren't a bunch of guys. I keep thinking of a bunch of guys because that's my nighttime that's show so where you don't have, we don't have any women that call that show. Maybe occasionally we get like another Charlene calls that show, but that's about it. You know? Yeah. It, I guess it's just a, a sausage party is what it is. So. <laughs> yeah. 
but uh, so anyway, so anybody do anything today? Uh, it's Labor Day. I labored. Went to Walmart. Uh, you went to Walmart. Were they open today? Yes. Yeah, I think uh, I think Costco's closed today. Oh. Yeah. I just woke up three hours ago, so I haven't done anything. You woke up three hours? Ago? <laughs> you stay up late? I always stay up late. I'm a night person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So am I. I, I, I usually am up till about two in the morning. But this last week, I've gotten used to going to bed about one. Frozen? Huh? You were Wait a minute. Everybody else is frozen. <laughs> Everybody else is frozen. You? you were frozen. Oh, you were the one frozen. You Everybody... were frozen. We were all well, talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, everybody was frozen except for me on this <laughs> side. <laughs> okay, he, he's right. Yeah. That's all that matters as long as I'm not frozen to <laughs> me. Uh, um, so, um, Paula, did you do anything today? Um, nothing to report, but. Uh... Um, Saturday night, uh, um, there was there was a, a an outdoor concert with uh, uh, with a movie which was all Disney animations, all the com com compilations of Disney uh, of Disney animations, and it was wonderful, oh. absolutely wonderful. Sounds cool. Well, well, now what was now? Wait a minute, it was a concert. It was a Cleveland, a Cleveland orchestra. Was oh, and they playing, were playing to the cartoon. They, it's an outdoor theater, and they had and they had this, this uh, and they had uh, three big screens set up. Uh, there was uh, uh, the lawns were were like uh, there was a pavilion, and the lawns were uh, were filled with people, and you could take a picnic and a bottle of wine, and then enjoy this concert. And it wasn't only the concert; it was. It was all that, like uh, uh, the, the Disney princesses and the Disney villains, and and the music that went with it, and it was really, it was wonderful. Oh yeah, Blossom. Yeah, yeah. Blossom is is a um, it's a local treasure, really. It's a wonderful place. Really, so you have culture in in in. We Ohio? have culture here in here, <laughs> here here in the in the boonies in in the Akron, Ohio. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Oh, you know. But it, that wasn't high culture because it was just Disney. It was kids. It was, Is there a reason why you decided to move to Akron, Ohio? My kids and grandkids. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now you 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 never lived there before, but your kids decided. No, I'm a Philadelphia born and bred. Yo, Marjorie. So how many of your kids are in Akron? Uh, my, it's my son and my daughter-in-law and my grandchildren. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, how many children did you have? I have two children. The other one is in Silver Spring, Maryland. Oh, okay. So why didn't you move to Silver Spring? a daughter. Why didn't you move to Silver Spring, Maryland? It's a long story, but, but mostly, it was, mostly it was because uh, they live in a, they live in an apartment and. Um, uh, I stayed with my with my son and daughter in law for a couple of months until I got a uh, my my own place. Oh, okay, all right. You know, it's 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 funny, Paul. I live in Cleveland, about thirty five minutes from you, and I work in Maryland, about thirty five minutes from Silver Spring. Do you really? Yeah, I commute. That's where I work. It's six hours from here. It's it, it's a very nice place, but the the real estate is ridiculous. It's uh, why it Washington D.C. Yeah, area. I'm, I'm south of DC where I work, but I go to Silver Spring all the time. The funny small world. Really? How yeah. about that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, we uh, we haven't been doing much of anything. I, I even though I got uh, got my walking back somewhat, it's not as strong as it was, and so uh, we've had to take our time walking down the street. Right, right Marjorie? I take them on the death walk. The death, death walk? walk is that death what you're walk. calling? <laughs> Yeah, well, we went out. We I was had, thinking I would, you know, I was waiting to see some late Facebook lives from you guys, but no, we we didn't do Facebook this week. Uh, we we just, you know, I I just decided. I'll tell you, Kevin and I and a couple other people get together sometimes on Saturday and talk to each other, 
but we uh, talked to each other on Friday instead, and it was around 1030. And uh, one of the people, Josh, suggested, well, if you want to put this up on uh, on Facebook or whatever, uh, you can run it, our discussion. And I just said, no, I said, I took the week off. <laughs> you know, I just want to talk to you guys. I, I don't I don't need to worry about how the show's going, you know. And, and and push the conversation and this show even if my leg were falling off i would do this show whoa so, too. well it isn't falling off okay so you know. even if i lost four more toes i'd be on the show <laughs> uh, uh, what does it say i agree with you but then we'd both be wrong that's good that's good so um, let me see here. And you, you, um, um, Kevin, what are you doing today? Fixing cars. Fixing. They keep, they keep breaking. Uh, oh, really? Every time I think I'm done, something else breaks. The well, alarm went these, off on my wife's these, car. Are these? Uh, oh, these are personal cars that you're working on. Yeah. Well, we're traveling this week, so I had to change the oil and fill filters and stuff on my truck because I'm moving and. And then uh, my wife's car has been randomly waking up my neighbors with the alarm in the middle of the night. So I had to go figure that one out. Wow. Yeah. You're, well, you're good with cars, aren't you? Well, apparently not. The alarm I like to try. The middle of the night, but... <laughs> I like to avoid going to the dealership is what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, they're past warranty, right? Yeah. 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 You don't want to. You know, are, how, how expensive are uh, dealerships now? Because I remember the old days, how they were. But they must have gotten worse since I had a car. Out here, they're running about 150 bucks an hour, between 125, 150. Really? Just double that, you could probably get a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the coffee's free. Yeah, and it's usually burnt. <laughs> <laughs> they make a pot at six in the morning and then let it sit there all day right what I always bothered me about dealerships i go to buy a car okay cars are going to cost me oh in those days because the last car i owned i think cost me something like forty thousand dollars top of the line accurate and you buy it and you're ready to buy this car you're ready to spend all this money, or at least obligate yourself to all of this money. And then they say, well, go, you have to go speak to our manager or somebody like that. And you sit down with this guy, and he tries to sell you coating under the car. Printing something? That's a noise, Alex. What? There's a noise, like a background noise. I know. Mandy's screen was lighting up when that was happening. I think it might. Mandy, is there something you're doing there? Are you printing? Hold on. Hold, hold on. Like a printer going. Like my, my inkjet printer. <laughs> She's doing her laundry. Oh. If that's it, then we know and then it doesn't bother us because then we go, it's the laundry. Good. You know. <laughs> But uh, we'll find out when she gets back. I'm I'm anxious to find out what that noise was. Um, but uh, I, uh, uh, yeah, you know, um, it's still going. Hmm. Wait a minute. Okay, so we asked Mandy, "What is that?" That was my house. Yes, I had their phone up too loud. What? That house? was my house guest. I had to turn up too loud. Your house uh, gets turned up too loud? House guest. House guest. House guest. Oh, you have house guests. Oh, I see. What were they doing? They were playing Jimmy Buffett on their phone. <laughs> oh, that's sad. I don't know. How many are grieving the death of Jimmy Buffett? Um, you are. Charlie. Yeah, I mean, y'all are, but so is everybody. Yeah. I'm not. Everybody. I'm not. Not you me. Didn't like Jimmy Buffett. Jeez. Not me. Yeah. Enjoyed his music, but I didn't know he was still alive until they told me he died. 
I don't drink, but I use it for an excuse to have a margarita or two the other night. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it, 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 he, he died the other day, of course, as everybody knows. And it was interesting because he died at the same time that uh, Bill Richardson died. Yeah. And uh, I, w- I went over to MSNBC and there it was. Bill Richardson died and we were doing this whole thing. Bill Richardson and all that he had done. Uh, he won a, a did he win a Nobel? He was nominated four times. I don't think he won. I don't think he won. Uh, you know, very important person. And then, and then I go over to CNN to see how they're reporting Bill Richardson and how they're reporting Bill Richardson is Jimmy Buffett just died. And I'm figuring now, if I got a news operation, which of these people am I going to mention first? It ain't going to be Jimmy Buffett, you know, but, and they had nothing on about, about Richardson at all. You know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you, so you a parrot head? Everybody is a yes. Jimmy Buffett fan all of a sudden. What? Huge. I mean, Everybody is a Jimmy Buffett fan, according to my Facebook feed. Oh, okay. Well, everybody was devastated. Yeah. Yeah, but he hasn't done anything in years except give comments know, but... and sell souvenirs. <laughs> Guy was a billionaire. Guy to Margaritaville. Guy was a billionaire. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. He, he and all... he also has all these songs that have been like downloaded now for the past three days, like, a re- you know. Yeah, that always happens. And then, did you know that the uh, lead singer for Smash Mouth died this morning? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember Smash Mouth. I must have heard that slowly or something because that song has been running through my head all day. Maybe I heard it in the store or something. Yeah. Yeah, so Smash Mouth. They're, they're famous songs. Yeah. Well, they go in threes, so I guess we don't have to worry about any deaths for yeah. a couple of days. Right? Smash Mouth was the Shrek soundtrack <laughs> thing, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All Star. That song, All Star, it just gets stuck in your head. Yeah. So were you a parrot head, Mandy? I did go see him in concert one time. I mean, it was probably in 2005, maybe. Yeah. How was it? Was it, you know, it was after not- Oh yeah, the the big draw to a Jimmy Buffett concert though was like the tailgating beforehand, because mm-hmm. you would you know it's all the parrot heads you'd see people in all their costumes and dressed up in like their island gear you know there's a lot of people watching. But, yeah, I mean it was a good show. But what I heard Enjoyable. about him that made me kind of like him and all the reporting about his death was that he was very loyal to his audience. Mm-hmm. And that he wanted wherever he was to give them the best show he possibly could. Yeah. And for the last year, he's been dying of cancer. Yeah, so. skin cancer. Right. Oh, wow. I, thought, I didn't know that's what it was. But he had canceled his last show in Atlanta. So I think, I guess he must have been getting pretty sick. Yeah. But that he went out there and gave it, a, gave it his all, you know, to the very end. And I, I appreciate that. You know, you really cared about the audience and giving them a good show and giving them a good experience and letting them have some fun. Uh, and none of them knew he was dying, you know. Now, skin cancer, that, that's the one that really got me. Isn't that curable? Well, no. it was a rare form, they said. It was a rare form of skin cancer and has been fighting it for four years. Yeah. Really? That's sad. I, I hadn't heard that yet, so that is sad. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. Now, Bill Richardson, how old was he, and what had he been sick, or what was his? Deal? I don't know about well, that one. Sick. He died in his sleep, and he was in his mid seventies. Oh, okay. In other his, words, my age. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my age. His his last thing like, was getting getting that athlete back from uh, yeah. where was yeah. the the Griner, whatever the basketball player from Russia Brittany was the last Brown. thing he worked on. Yeah. Yep. He got that. Is that who got that? Was it uh, Stephanie Reiner? Is that the he was he was part of the team, yeah. Wow. Brittany. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And and the one who kept the North Koreans in check for years. The guy was brilliant. Well, he supposedly was a very good negotiator. Yeah. Yeah. And he negotiated a lot of these things. 
And uh, people have said that he was, you know, he was just really good at what he did. And he, and he he was, uh, I could have sworn he won the Nobel or he won some prize recently. Well, uh, he was just nominated for the Nobel. Yeah. He, he once got a thousand of those tickets at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that's dark so seriously. he was a brilliant guy i was i supported him when he was he was talking about running for president years ago yeah years ago i i i heard him after you know he had run for president or he tried to run for president didn't get the nomination i don't think um and, and why is that why can't the smart people get it well that's the problem that's what we all asked is <laughs> Why? I think he was from New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. So it gets very little what? press out there. Very little press. Yeah. 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 You could be right. You got to be someplace where you get a lot of press. Yeah. Well, yeah. like how did Bill Clinton come on the scene? I was too young. I wasn't too young, but I was young and well, didn't Bill care. Bill Clinton was governor of the state. I'll tell you how he became president. But it was Arkansas. Uh, yeah. He had these women he was having sex with. And no, uh, <laughs> he had it, given a speech that that just made him stand out after well, giving was, a horrible speech at the previous Democratic National Convention. He had oh. he was a great speaker. Yeah, so he was governor and, of New Mexico. Hmm. He was governor of New Mexico. Yep. No, Richard. Yeah, Richardson. Yeah, Richardson was. Richardson, yeah. But anyway, no, he didn't win a Nobel Prize. He was nominated. It says it says here that he he was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize last month for his effort in freeing hostages. Oh, so, he, so he may he may he may he may win one to, to posthumously. Who gets a million dollars? The family. All the buffalo in uh, New Mexico. Okay. I don't think you can get a Nobel Prize posthumously. I know several scientists who were up for no, Nobel Prizes and didn't get them because they died. Let me Google that. Wait a minute, we're getting that noise again. What's that noise? <laughs> I think, it's not me. I think it happened once before when you called from home. There's something in your okay. home that's causing a little... Don't Don't cry. <laughs> There's no crying in the pop-up show. Come on. There's There's no crying. Crying. Huh? Everybody. Uh, Boy, we're having this is a freezing day for everybody. Okay. She's moving. Yeah, she's fine. Is she frozen? <laughs> no, you're the only one frozen. <laughs> So Mandy, Mandy, did you get your did you get your jury summons I don't look yet? Like I'm frozen. I'm Eighty three years of age. Okay. Did I did I get what you say? Did, did you I get, get the jury, jury summons, summons yet what? for the big the big the big trial coming up in Georgia? No, I don't live in Fulton County. So uh -oh. and I just got called like maybe three months ago. Or <laughs> Too, like it was back in the spring that I got excused. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. We, we've got something going with our apartment, two little kerfuffles, okay? And um, in one case, um, the, the, I think our old judge is the one that's in, it been appealed to. But our lawyer wrote us and said, but he probably won't be easily available because of the whole Trump thing. So I think he's involved in the Trump case here in New York City. Is he really? And it's maybe one of the judges assigned to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So that, that would be fun if, he, if that were the case, you know, not that it makes any difference to my life, but yeah. But anyway, yes, uh, yes, Charlie has another fact. Yes, uh, the Nobel Prize is not supposed to be awarded posthumously. They have a rule oh. against it. But on That's two occasions, it was because the person died just prior to the award being announced, and they didn't know that they had died. Oh, okay. Twice. So what do they do? What do they do? Is there a run? They gave an award anyway, but they're not supposed to. And there have been, like I said, there have been several scientists 
who had done great work and were going to get a Nobel Prize but died. And so they never got it. Yeah, let me ask, uh, let me ask uh, Mandy to do something. Mandy, would you just yeah. put your, your, your camera on mute? Put your Zoom on mute. My camera? Uh, your, your, your mic. Oh, audio. Yeah, on mute. She looks sad that she has to be on mute. See, yeah. there's no noise. <laughs> Yeah, you, you're going to get canceled, Alex. Telling a woman to, to okay. Be quiet. When, when you when you want to talk, just turn your mic on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's something in that house. I don't know what it is. It has, it has NSA. NSA. You're being bugged. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. You know. You know what I'm tired of. I get women. Oh, what yeah. is it you're hearing? I don't know, but I just heard it again now. Is it, buzzing, is it my ways in my air conditioning running, my refrigerator? Sounds like a vacuum. I'm telling you, it sounds like a, a laser jet printer. I mean, an inkjet printer printing. Yeah. Or a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Or, my refrigerator. or it could be ghosts. <laughs> or an Ghost. NSA bug. I asked Horton, he said he can't hear it, so it's not a who. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, no, what I was going to say, uh, I, I, what, I, what I'm getting tired of, Marjorie insists on, for TV, well, she's gone now, so I can tell on her. Uh, she's always watching MSNBC. And I keep telling her, you know, that if you watch Fox all the time, it, it, it would rot your brain, but so is watching MSNBC yeah. all the time will rot your brain. Okay, and uh, so I, it, it, what I'm tired of, and every time I hear it in the other room, I hear the word Trump, and I'm thinking to myself, didn't they learn their lesson back in 2016 that they literally elected Donald Trump by mentioning him constantly? I mean, he he works every day, gets up in the morning, says, how can I say something or do something which will get them talking about me continually? Yep. And somehow these morons over at MSNBC are biting the bait. You know, they're doing exactly what Trump wants. It's every network. Yeah, well... He Everybody. shows up for an arraignment. They got to film the jet. They got to film him getting off the jet. Oh, they got to film him leaving the golf uh, car, uh, golf place in New Jersey and getting on the plane and then following the plane and then following the car from the plane to the place where he's going to get indicted. And I'm going, why are you doing this? The only good thing, Alex, is they decide, they said today in the news in Georgia that they give you your uniform based on the size that they put on the on the arrest warrant so oh lovely if you tell them you're lovely. yeah if you say you're 215 pounds you get a uniform for so it's That's gonna be exactly. fun this it's gonna be fun to see the prison fix so what did he say he was uh, 200, 200, 215 215 64 215 like six, yeah. rocky <laughs> yeah is he six four a sausage no case. That's what he says he says he is but everyone knows he's he's not well, he also says he's a billionaire, and uh, New York, but, says it turns out he isn't. Well, the 215 is actually true if you just measure the left side. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're talking about him. Yep. I'm not mentioning the name of that goon. No, we haven't. Yeah. But all I'm saying is those morons over at MSNBC don't understand. They're playing the same sucker game they were sucked into back in 2016. I mean, this is the man, how the man gets doesn't have to buy advertising. He's going to get all the publicity without even having to buy advertising. So, like being a sports team, you don't have to advertise. The news will cover your crap, everything you do, yeah. and make and make us taxpayers but pay for your stadiums. You can make billions of dollars. Yeah. Well, that's the part that bothers me. Me yeah. too. When people when we buy stadiums for 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 teams, which are going to make money, you know. Can't they build a the move if you don't? Yeah. yeah. Not not to mention that you know it's supposed to be the team from your city and not a single player has ever been from your city. Yeah, but you know what? What I would threaten is that if if uh, 
if they say, well, if you don't build us a new stadium, we're leaving. We'll go, just go, don't let the you know door hit you in the ass on the way out. You know? that, happened, that happened here years ago. They told me that there was a football team here that went to Baltimore and then they put a new one here. Yeah, because they wouldn't they wouldn't give them all the, the stuff they wanted. Yep. Oh boy. Um, I, don't, I don't follow any of it. I think it's hilarious that well, we, I, we I, just get know, suckered I, out I, all that money. I think it's my our friend Patrick Kevin that is always complaining about that where he lives, which is where in uh, Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. He's, yeah. he's sick of them building ballparks using taxpayer expense, <laughs> and the, the you know the team gets to use the ballpark gratis. Mm-hmm. Well, what is that all about? If you're if you've got a team and you can't make money with it, then you've got a problem, you know. So I find it ridiculous. But, uh, we agree. Yeah, uh, but uh, th th that's another. Uh, there, there are a lot of things. You know, as I get older, I'm bothered by a lot of stuff. I'm by I'm bothered lately by high pitched noises, <laughs> the sirens in this neighborhood. Oh. Are without peer anywhere in the world. You would think that there were thousands of people dying in Harlem every day. If you'd stop robbing places, Alex, they wouldn't have to turn those things on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, so uh, anyway, I just, I, I, I just, I, I, I didn't want to get political today, and I don't know if that's being political as much as being observational about the fact that. Uh, Trump knows how to play these people like a fine-tuned violin. And and they 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 fall sucker for it every single time. It's, isn't it more about audience share and money than it is uh -huh. anything else? I don't know that a Trump necessarily gets them audience share, although MSNBC's ratings are higher now. He's news since he's been indicted. But he works both ways. If you hate him, people want to watch to hear how horrible he is and how he's going down. And if you love him, you want to hear the lies about how he's innocent. So both both sides benefit. Yeah, it's a matter. It's, it's of just, it's which just one. like you know. It's just like the um, uh, why are commercials so annoying? Because people remember. Don't even start us with that. <laughs> I gotta say, begin with if I hear this woman, this big fat woman who should be on I have diet. To diabetes, and I'm here to yeah. say, don't even mention it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know that one. I've got that. Yeah, I, 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 I just all before we and she, this, this, <laughs> this, I, I'm gonna call her fat because she's she very is, fat. She is she's very fat. Fat. She's mm -hmm. exceedingly fat and the type of person who I'm going to mute. Me. I'm going to mute. I don't even want to talk about it. I'm going to mute. <laughs> <laughs> I do that every time it comes on. I uh, mean that commercial? Yep. Yep. It's annoying. Uh, it is so annoying. I don't know how they sell anything from it. You know? I got diabetes and I won't buy that. Right. <laughs> and you're not fat. You're not fat, are you? <clears throat> A lot of people who are fat are asking for diabetes. Am I right or wrong about that? Uh, you get it has nothing to do with it. It's just the damn product. And <laughs> people lose weight on it, though. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the, I've got the the other one, and I can't get it, and I need it for other reasons. Wait, wait, what? What other one? What do you mean the other one? You got the other one? Mongerno. But they don't have a fat person dancing around in the middle of a plaza. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> and she's kind of unlikable, isn't she? She kind of looks like she could be really a nasty fat person. Well, maybe she'll <laughs> end. No, up she's very happy. She, she, she's she, very happy. She looks like the kind of woman who would go to Costco and push people out of the way while she's riding in the cart and smiling. You know? <laughs> but that commercial just—it's horrible. It just runs, and they run it over and over again. You know, there's such a thing as filming two or three versions of a commercial and then rotating them. But that apparently is lost on companies like Liberty Mutual. Yeah. 
Who, if and I here we are that, talking about it, so it must be effective. If I see that goddamn go. emu one more time, <laughs> that's what I'm having for lunch. That's right, emu steak. The emu steak. Uh, and the one, the latest one, they're running. See, it's not like okay, so run it. You know, all right, the emu thing is kind of a lame idea, but go ahead. But make three, four different versions of the commercial and then rotate them. Don't let me have to constantly for the last month, I think, see the same commercial of him month? handing the keys to a kid in a toy car with his baby emu. <laughs> to begin with, it's not a very good commercial. But secondly, can't you do like two or three other versions and then just rotate them? I called to complain about it, but the guy that answered was a gecko. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he completely agreed with you he did he did <laughs> right then he ate a fly i'll tell you guy <laughs> the guy it's funny there's this company progressive insurance which here. has some terrible commercials the ones with um flow flow right and they're always uh like right now they're running over and over again barbie's dream house right yeah I'll tell you, I won't tell you who her boyfriend is, but I can. No, know. but I don't think I yeah. can. I don't think I can. <laughs> and, well, yeah. I mean, okay. So you run that once or twice. You run a couple of others, but this one hey. over and over, and over again. And uh, it, it just after a while, but progressive, the same people that do progressive do the best ads in the insurance business practically. And that's the one about don't be like your parents. Yeah. And those are great ads. I love those. Fortunately, they keep running the same one over and over and over again for a while, but you know. They switch like, off. They I don't know how you go from doing good commercials like that, which are fun and sell the product, and go and do the thing with Flo and all her lame guys trying to sell insurance. It just, because it appeals to a demographic that isn't you. That's right. Yeah. Listen, every demographic fits me except, you know, teenagers. It's the same with that Bud Light nonsense with the, the trans woman. That was supposed to be just in that community trying to add a demographic. Yeah. And some closeted right-wing nutbag happened to see it and oh. turned it into a whole thing. I don't think they did more than send her a case of, of beer, right? Right. They With really her face on it. Yeah. With yeah. Six cases of it or whatever. Well, you know. I yeah, mean, but it was trying to sell Bud Light to a different demographic. All of a sudden, you've got uh, people on TV uh, taking their shotguns and shooting. And then getting caught a week later drinking it at their own bar. Drinking, you know, yeah, at their, <laughs> their bar, they're drinking Bud Light. <laughs> After raising all this thing, yeah. I don't know why do people so upset by that? It's the beer. It's the beer of proctologists. Oh, that's butt light. I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, but I don't. I don't. Oh, look, there's Geico. Now, Geico, <laughs> great commercials. Yeah, that was that was the guy on the phone. Yeah. I got the phone that you talked to. Where's my, you? Uh, my wife's my wife's boss buys airplane parts and they bought a bunch of uh airplane parts from gecko insurance and they found a box full of these things so they're everywhere <laughs> <laughs> they brought a bunch home and they're posted all over the office i'm going jesus it's everywhere oh, it's geico insurance not gecko yeah. Geico, the gecko the geico or whatever the hell is yeah that. but, but, but the, the guy the gecko worked you know, yeah. and what happened, Geico was very good. And they created like something like three campaigns at the same time to appeal to different groups. And the gecko is supposed to appeal to females. Uh, do you like the gecko, Mandy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I unmuted myself. I had to, what? Do I like the gecko? No, I'm glad you like the. How about you, Paula? Paula, you like the gecko? <laughs> no, I just thought Mandy's response was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you like you like the geckos, right? You, you talking uh, to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> You're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to me. 
<laughs> no, I thought it was a pretty dumb commercial too. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, so much. I for like that. his little New Zealand accent or whatever it's supposed to be. Hmm. How about Charlene? Charlene, you like the gecko ads? Yeah, they're okay. I mean, they're so. How can you not? Uh, you can't avoid them. They've been on for many years. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they, uh, you know, so I mean, but it's just if you're going to do advertising, which you're going to do, don't keep running the same ad over and over and over again. Make three versions of the commercial. I, you know what, Alex? I remember a, a long time ago there there were commercials that had a sense of humor, um, and they were great fun. Um, but uh, uh, they they found out that, that they didn't uh, help sales. Well, no, a guy by the name of Stan Freeberg. Years. That's ago, right. That's right. Stan Freeberg. It incredible. Had an advertising company, uh, <clears throat> and um, he really uh, did great. Funny, funny. I laugh out loud commercials, but they found the reason he finally wound up going out of business is they stopped using him. And the reason was exactly the fact that you came up with, they found the commercials, which you laugh at and you find extremely funny. Don't sell the product. Right. And you, so when asked afterwards, after people, Oh, the greatest commercial, this guy's doing this and the guy's doing that. And you go, what was the product? Nobody could remember. <laughs> so I, I remember the Alka Seltzer commercials. Where, you know, like I can't believe I ate the whole thing. You know, yeah. <laughs> that was an Alka Seltzer. Yeah. No, no yeah, it was pop, pop fizz fizz. fizz. It was, what was it? Then? I can't believe I. Oh, I yeah right. Okay. Can't believe. Oh, can't believe I ate the whole thing. Wasn't Alka Seltzer. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking. I was thinking. Who, who was the woman? Sarah Peller, I think, was her name. And and she was. Uh, uh, Looking at the small hamburger, what was her? Where's, Where's the, the beef? beef? Where's, Where's the, beef? the beef? Yeah, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. I think it was Pepto Bismol, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and now they got that stupid dance about indigestion yeah. and diarrhea. Yeah, <laughs> on the air on the airplane. I think when they do the diarrhea part, they show they're circling their stomach. Oh, no, or do they point to their rear? They're pout, no, pouting the their stomach. butt. Yeah, it's a, it, it's the butt. Oh God! Yeah. And I think Alka Seltzer was plop plop. Right, right. Oh, well, we'll right, yeah, right. But but uh, later they, they went with the commercials that when I can't believe I ate the whole thing, and they sold those commercials did very well. Right, and in the background, his wife said, "You ate it, Ralph." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, I just, I, I just uh, watching these ads over and over and over again. I'm sorry. I, I want to. I want to kill that kid with his fucking tiny. <laughs> no, no. Emo, you know. We'll ask Mikey. He likes it. <laughs> oh yeah, remember that? Oh one? my God, my son's name was is Michael, and when he hated that commercial so yeah. bad, he was in school and he got teased about it all the time. Yeah. Sorry, Charlie. Only the best tuna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I the crop the... to that. Bing hated Crosby, that Bing Crosby, and his kids went to our school in high school and. Poor Nathaniel, listen to that. Hey, Nathaniel, got any orange juice? You know, that whole thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, because Bing owned what company? It was, uh, was it Minute Maid? That's right. Yep. He owned Minute Maid. That made him yeah. a lot of money. Made him a fortune. You he know what? Always, always, always gave him orange juice jokes to Nathaniel and Mary Crosby. You know what else he owned? Most of Ampex. Yeah. Oh. And they were right down the road in Palo Alto. Yeah. Mountain and View. That made him a fortune because you know they were the leaders in uh in in recorded materials and yep. recording on tape. I was gonna ask you what that was. Do you know where the guys in a, a, at Ampex got the whole idea for the tape recorder? Guy who started it was in Germany during World War II, and he was sent on a reconnaissance mission to a radio station behind enemy lines in Germany to find out how Hitler could be giving a speech from that town when they knew he was in another town completely giving another speech. And so when they went there, they found these recorders, and they airlifted them out of there. He took one of them back to Redwood City and what do they call it? Reverse engineered it. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they came out with the Ampex tape recorder. But what they did is they found these tape recorders. The, the tape recorder was invented by Adolf Hitler. Okay. Uh, but I mean, <clears throat> that was, uh, that became a very big company. And how Bing Crosby became involved is the guy who started the company sh- showed up at his business doorstep or whatever, said, I want to see Mr. Crosby. They let him in and got to see him. And he said, what do you have? He said, uh, how are you doing your, your radio shows? And he said, well, we record them when we do them because he didn't do them live. He pre-recorded his shows, but they pre-recorded them on late lacquered discs. Okay. And sometimes if they had to edit them or something, they'd go between discs and make a final disc. And he said, here's what I'd, I'll do. You run a line to the hotel across the street from your studio. I'll record the entire show. You tell me what cuts you want, what edits you want made in the show, and I'll get it back to you within an hour. He said, what? He said, don't ask me how I'm going to do it. Just we'll do it. And what he did is he recorded it, and he got the tape back to them in an hour. And he said, how'd you do that? And he said, this machine here. And that was the tape recorder. And Crosby said, how much to invest? Because he saw right then and there the value of it. So that's how you get the uh, the pre-recorded programming. And, and Memorex spun off that, right? What was that? Didn't Memorex spin off that? Off of uh, Am- Ampex? Ampex. No, Memorex was only a tape. It wasn't a recorder. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Now, Ampex so it, made the recorders. Yeah. They were the tape, yeah. Because they were right down, they were right next door as well. I got to tell you, I when I went into the business, every station had Ampex tape recorders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I uh, had one. Yeah, there was yeah, they're old reel to reel. Yeah, Mag- yeah. Um, Mag- seven inch reels. Yep. Another company too, Magnus something or another, but basically, T-A-C. huh? And T A C T E A C. Well, they, they they all came later. Later, yeah. Okay, but the initial t- tape recorders. Uh, made by Ampex, were in in use for the next 20 to 30 years. Yeah. And they didn't break. Those things were solid as a rock. You had to pretty well beat the hell out of them in order to make them go bad. And yep. if they did, you replace the recording heads, you know, things yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. And the tapes went bad before the tape recorder did. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But now everything like this right now, we're recording it digitally. So it doesn't really <clears throat> matter any longer whether it's going through a couple of machines or what. I don't think there are tape recorders anymore. In fact, I still have some tapes of old shows I did in New York. And I have a hard time playing the, finding a place to play those things. Uh, but occasionally I will find somebody. Shecky used to have a company uh, that... <clears throat> that did uh, they sold uh, a footage to people but they also had different recording machines and so on and they had those, those players so if i wanted to go and make a copy i'd say to shecky can you have, make a copy of this for me but he's gone now so that's it for that anyway uh let's see here We're, we got about five minutes left anything anybody want to, wants to bring up at all we discuss my mental, my mental, my my physical condition. No, but that was interesting. I, I, uh, yeah. the, the 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 history of stuff, you know, and and then it's almost like I wondered, is that the beginning of fake news? You know, where you can create your own reality, and and uh, and here we are. Beginning well, of fake, I'll tell you what where the beginning of fake news was. Uh, Joseph Goebbels in Germany. Yep. He created fake news. He called it fake news. Yep. Uh, and uh, it has been a concept that has long existed. We try to think that, oh, it just happened yesterday. But no, no. Um, I imagine town criers did fake news, you know. Oh. I mean, it's a prerequisite for fascism. You have to have fake news. <laughs> yeah, you can't, no, right. no fascism for you without fake news. You can't do it. You need it. Yeah, you need to create a um, a truth that doesn't exist. Okay, you know, and, and then an enemy you, and an enemy that doesn't exist. You need something to scare people too. You know, 
You get people scared, they're going to say, save me, save me. How's the noise in your apartment, Mandy? I live in a house, thank you very much. Yeah. House, house, excuse me. Oh, I don't the, know. The pride of home, home ownership is to beat up on the people who don't have homes but only have apartments. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you hear it now? No. Mm -hmm. no. no. Seems to have disappeared. I don't want you to feel guilty. It's not your fault, no. whatever it is. You know? I'm usually at work, so it's fine. Oh, okay. It's Somebody, holidays. <laughs> Somebody's sneaking up behind Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, let me sort of think. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we, we need to bring up. Uh, it's a holiday, but, you know, a lot of people today, considering it's a holiday, thank you all for doing it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Too bad Mike Chisholm's not here because I understand Labor Day is a big holiday in Canada. Yeah, but up, up there it's I think uh, May first, like the rest of the world. Oh, right. I don't know. They have big. They have all kinds of football games in the Canadian Football League today for Labor Day. They have all these rivalries mm -hmm. that they schedule just for Labor Day. Well, I'm, Mike may be doing something. Mm -hmm. God, one of these people having a life. Yes, Kevin. I'm going to jump out early. My mom-in-law is leaving, so i got to go say goodbye. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. That's our good friend, Kevin. Wait a minute. Uh, and, and Mandy waved goodbye. She got in there to wave goodbye. My voice sound hoarse. No. No. Oh. <laughs> no. I was wrong. It no, is today hoarse. in Canada. What'd you say? It is today. First, first uh, is, Monday. Is, is it Labor Day in Canada? It says the first Monday of September. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably. probably I, I only know this because I've been watching Canadian football all summer. So, <laughs> Who's that person that walked behind? Yeah. Your house guest? Your house guest? That's my house guest. Okay. You, he just bought a house, so he, he's having to stay here so he can until he gets his floors done. Wait a minute, he bought a house so he can stay at yours? Yeah. <laughs> oh, getting ready, yes. <laughs> I suppose, you know, I, I it's probably much easier to have a home down there, isn't it? How how expensive mm -hmm. do they get? They get pretty Yeah, oh. they do. Really? really? Mm -hmm. But he got a good deal. What about taxes down there? Yeah. How would you, what'd you say? What? Taxes. Very good. Very good? Reasonable. 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 Taxes are never good. Taxes are never good, as you said, but they're reasonable. There aren't any in Texas, are there, Scott? <laughs> income tax? No. Uh, no, no income tax, no. Oh, we're talking about uh, uh, real estate tax when you buy a home. Oh. <clears throat> I don't think there's a tax when you buy a home, but I don't. No, yeah. no, he's talking about uh, property, property tax. tax. Oh, yeah, property tax, tax yeah. Yeah, that, a that's a lot better than like in California or New York. Yeah. 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 You don't pay right. here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Because uh, I had heard that Texas didn't have any property taxes. But uh, oh. somebody walking behind you again, Mandy. <laughs> yeah, he came. He... <laughs> This is silly. I'm gonna do that. He goes, I don't think my knees will hold up though. Is he having that happens fun? all the time when she's at work? <laughs> yeah, he does. That's right. He said it happens all the time when she's at work. Oh yeah. Yeah, but tell him the show is being recorded. Not all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we're getting to the end of the show. And uh, thank you all for being here today. Uh, and uh, putting up with my post uh, illness time, but you know, I everybody was getting a hold of me, like Paul, and saying, "Is he going to do a show tomorrow?" You know, and um, this show is something I would do. I think if I died yesterday, I'd still be doing this show today because <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's just you know, it doesn't. There's no pressure. Well, if you're planning, if you're planning on checking out, tape the show ahead of time. 
<laughs> Have a death show, yeah, in the bag. Yeah, I'm a I'm the third guest on the Bill Richards and Jimmy Buffett show after this one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, everybody, it's been wonderful and it's nice and it's a great way to spend a Labor Day. And um I'm sorry you people don't have better things to do. But anyway, that's, uh, thank you so much, Paula. I appreciate it. Uh, Marjorie, thank you. So, what's for dinner? Fish. I, it's I, a surprise, right, Marge? Not, yeah. fish, fish. not fish again. Yes. Oh, boy. Anyway. Thank you, Charlene. Good to see you. Good to see you, Scott. Andrew Deutsch, always a pleasure when you can do it. We really appreciate it. Uh, the lovely and attractive Mandy O'Brien. Thank you, Mandy. And the lovely and attractive Charlie Wallace. And we thank also Kevin for having been here and also for uh, Len LaFrisco for checking in. So it's been a pretty complete show for a, you know, for a Labor Day. Uh, and everybody, uh, uh, thank you so much. And of course, we're going to sign off now with the immortal words of Edward Berger, who says, That's all, folks. <laughs> Bye -bye. Bye. See you later. <laughs>